Thank you, Doc. We'll have, carry that conversation on. I knew you'd have something to say about this. Do, 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 do. Because he lives. Okay. Morning, church. Say amen. For those who made it, we are under restrictions, so we kept it quiet. We're streaming. For those who were told from most of the church, stay home. I pray you're going to get this clear. I did a Sunday school, which I wasn't anticipating doing specifically, but feeling good. And we did that. And sing a song, have a prayer, and get into the message. So let's sing a song and open your open your hymnal to um, 270. I'm singing what I could sing right now. 270, the Haven Arrest. We'll sing that. I want to sing a couple of simple ones that I know really well. Yeah. Where? Let's sing this. Let me sing. 270. Anyone want to sing? Help me out here. Come on. 270. All fears are gone. Yep. And though I know. I know this one. This is good. All right. The Haven Arrest. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea. Here we go, church. <clears throat> one, two, three. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea. So burdened with sin and distress Till I heard a sweet voice saying Make me your choice And I entered the haven of rest Anchored my soul in the haven of rest I'll sail the wide seas no more the tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep. Jesus, I'm safe evermore. I yielded myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the word. My fetters fell off and I anchored my soul. The haven of rest is my Lord. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy jeep. Jesus, I'm safe. On four, on four. Oh, come to the Savior, he patiently waits to save by his power, deep power, power. Anchor your soul in the haven of rest and say, my beloved is mine. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide sea no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep. Jesus, I'm safe. All right, remain standing. We'll sing one more song. Let's pray. Rob D, lead us in a word of prayer. Then we'll sing another song. Amen. Yes.
Ты прав. Боже, ты... Да. Amen. All right, thank you. Good. Let's sing 489. I mean, 487. 487. Now I belong to Jesus. Yeah, me too. Good, buddy. Good. 487. How about everybody say amen? amen. All right, 487. Now, Jesus, my Lord, will love me how long? Forever. Forever. Now I be, what? Um, no, no, hold on. No, no. Yeah, that one, that one. Handsome, my soul. Now I belong to him. That's right. Let's go to one. Here we go. Ready? Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him, no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Time alone. Come on, help me out here. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came forth to bring me salvation, lifted me up. Sorrow and shame, now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Jesus to save me, long has enslaved me. His precious blood He gave to redeem. Now I, now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Okay, that's good. Hi. 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 Didn't, I didn't, I got to, almost everybody didn't get you. Okay, you're good, you're good. We told pretty much everyone, stay away and just go to stream live. I, I didn't, I, you know, I thought a few people last morning, we had almost everybody covered. I think your mind went to my, I said, there's no way she's showing up. I'll let the church know, church, that listening, I've tried to reach everybody. We mostly did. But, until further notice, just we're going to have a very skeletal, skeletal crew, very limited people to help work sound equipment, a few folks to give me some support, and we'll, that's it, you know, but, and then until further notice, we'll get back to resume normal. So that's it. All right, let's, uh, did you want to sing that song? No. All right. But you know what, Phil, let's have a little offering. Um. You got, okay, good. have an offering for those who are here. <laughs> Not, <laughs> no, just one. Where'd Terry go? Where'd Terry go? He's getting coffee, probably. Let's, end up him up. let's pray, with, pray for us. Pray for the offering, Phil. Lord, Father God, I so thank you, Lord, that we're in the church, Lord. Amen. Amen. Focus on you when the storms are here. And we just pray that those people that don't know you, Lord, would tune in and learn how to get to know you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray that you just bless us and help us.
do and I know that you you're watching us right now and it's it's, it's all for you Lord and I would I just say wherever you go and continue to protect us as the week unfolds in Jesus name amen amen amen, amen. good Pastor Rick. and I you know for I'll say this to the church, to the members of Blessed Hope. You're not here today. You know where the church is. You're a faithful tither. Just put your tithe in the mail. That's all I can say. I mean, can somebody say amen? amen. Just put your tithe in the mail. Just because you're not here, we still got to pay bills, and hopefully we get back to normal. But that's it. We just want to remind you of that. And I appreciate those that have already done so. Thank you. All right. In the meantime, uh, that's, that part's over. And you know what? It was my wife's birthday. We'll sing to her. Let's sing to Bernadette. Come on, let's sing to that. Her birthday was on Friday, and we had planned to do something. Of course, you know, we make plans, and God says no. We had a wonderful day. We, no, no, I know we did. We had a wonderful day. But our plan was to go somewhere that was everything closed yeah. the day the world stopped, the world stood still. But we had a great day. Just being with my wife is joyful for me. We enjoy each other's company. It's a little ride, it's a little walk. And that's it. Bill, hurry up. No, he's not coming. Happy birthday. Let's go. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bernadette. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again means salvation. How many have you? Say so. Jesse, say something, and I say to all and Amen. And I'm Yes, yes, help us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, yeah. Man. What a wonderful hour. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out with his saving power. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Amen. Grace. And I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Hi, my girl. Like a bird out of prison. I've taken my flight. Like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Like a poor wretched beggar. Man, thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Easy. In the blood of Jesus. Swap, swap. 
gone again. Hey, you did fine. That's good, Bernadette. Thank you. That was good stuff. Woo! Wow. Let me sip of this. Okay, very good. Open your Bibles up to Philippians chapter 4. Happy birthday, my wife. It was a beautiful day the other day. That's the beauty of being at the Lord, being at peace. Plans were changed because the plans of everybody got changed. We just enjoyed the day together after we had to do our duties. And that's important. Philippians chapter 4, God had given me a different message, and then, I mean, earlier, and I told my wife I was praying, meditating, and, then, and I said, you know what? Sometimes it's just, you fight through it. And I said, no, no, no. And I came back, read my Bible, and opened it up, and it hit me. And I'm going to give it to you right now. So Philippians, let's start at verse 15. Philippians 4, 15. Read a few verses, explain it, and I'll preach one verse to you today, and it's right here. It's Philippians 4.19. That's the verse for today. <clears throat> All right, verse 15, there you go. Maybe we stand up for that. We stand up for the reading of the word. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. They were a great church. For even in Thessalonica, which was nearby, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but if I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphrodites the things which were sent from you an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, with that said, one more prayer before I preach, and then we'll get started. All right, uh, Rob, just give me a short prayer, Rob. Rob uh, Meyer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. So I verse, verse 15 to 20 read, Paul writes to the Philippians. Paul is in prison. He's writing to the Philippians from prison. And he says something very interesting in verse 19, which we're going to meditate on. Before I get to verse 19, it, verse 19 is a promise. But my God shall supply all your need. I'm going to give you the explanation historically, and I'll make an application. My God shall supply all your need. Talking to the Philippian church because they helped him. When you help somebody in the Lord, God never forgets. And God is duty bound to reward you for that. And that's what Paul's saying. He says, you know, but my God shall supply all your need. The your need was talking to the Philippians that helped Paul. And Paul said, my God. 
So historically speaking, he's talking about a promise to that church that bailed him out and helped him out during a difficult time. So when you've done that, you're lending unto the Lord. You're helping the Lord out Amen. by helping out another brother and sister in Christ. And that's what Paul wanted to let them know. The name of the message is called God is Able. God is Able. And in verse 19, that's the historical background to this, uh, and the application to us is that this promise applies to us too. Listen, you've helped out church, say amen. amen. You've helped out some brothers, say amen. amen. Well, then God, this, this, this applies to us. And in verse 19, one verse, powerful verse, and I'm going to break it down to four, three or four points. Watch it. But my God, stop right there. My God. Paul's saying my God. Can you say your God? Yes. Hey, listen, that's personal. It's not just a God I read about. It's not just a theological yeah. understanding I have about learning who God is. Paul says, but my God, if I say my wife, I'm talking about Bernadette. It, we're together. I know her. She knows me. I say my God. I know God. He knows me. Can you say my God? It's personal. Everything in Christianity is personal. It's not based on a religion. It's not based on uh, a list of do's and don'ts. That comes individually, personally. It's based on a personal walk with Jesus Christ. It's based upon you. One day when you said, Lord, like my wife just said before, I'm in trouble. I need help. Save me. I'm coming to you the best way I know how. Wash my sins in your precious blood. I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to be a Christian. I don't know what it's like. I just want to turn that. I want to get away from that old life. Save me, Lord. You cry out like that. It's personal. But my God, it's a personal connection to God. Is Jesus your Savior? Is he your personal Savior? Is he your God? You know, the personal walk, personal relationship, the whole thing. When, when I'll give you a great Bible illustration before I move on. In Exodus, when Israel was coming out of Egypt, the way they got out was when Moses told, God told Moses, tell them to kill the blood of a lamb. Kill the lamb, rather, put the blood on the doorpost and on the sides. And get in that house and stay there. Shut the door. They don't get out of the house until the death angel, what, passes over. Hence, we have the holiday of Passover. And that's how they got delivered, because when the firstborn in Egypt, human or animal, was killed that night, Pharaoh said, let them go, get them out of here. They're killing us, literally. And they left. That's how Israel came to being, by exiting, hence the book of Exodus, Egypt, to go into the promised land, under the leadership of Joshua. But before I get ahead of myself, the Passover, how did that work? Well, you had to kill a lamb and put the blood on the door. We got that, right? If I did it for my house, does that protect my neighbor? No. Each, every, a lamb for every house. You know what that is? Personal. If you want the blood of the lamb to save you, watch it, make it personal. Don't just say, like I heard growing up in church, behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Lord have mercy on us. And I, like, I didn't know what that meant. No one explained that to me. It wasn't personal. Oh, I heard the terms. They didn't mean anything to me until I got born again. And then I understood that Lamb of God is Jesus Christ. And he's the behold the Lamb of God. John's talking to Jesus. And it's through his blood that the death angel will keep away from us and save your soul and never go to hell. Amen. So thank God, God is able, and you need to have a personal walk with God. So let's look at it again, verse 19. First point, Paul says, but my God, I like that, it's my God, my God. Help me, Lord, my God. Something else, next part of that verse. My God shall supply all your need. Stop right there. Shall supply all your need. Wait, before I explain that, you know what I should say this. I mentioned it in Sunday school. Watch. Talk about personal. Jesus said this. Or John says this in John 1. As many as received him, to them gave you power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's personal. As many as received him. Again, it's a personal plea. Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Personal plea. I'm the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though we were dead, yet shall he live. It's a personal plea. It's always based on a personal walk with Jesus Christ. That's number one, personal God. Secondly, my God shall supply all your need. Shall supply all your need. Who shall supply your need? God. Who is our source of supply? Our supply source is who? God. 
Who do we count on? The Lord. You know, listen, the Lord is the one that supplies us. He is the one that will supply us. That's where the term Jehovah Jireh comes. The Lord will provide. When Abraham was told to offer his son Isaac, back in Genesis 22, he brings his son to the altar. He's going to kill him. He's doing that because of his great love for God, and he felt the Lord told him that at that time. And he's doing that, and you know his wife doesn't understand that. His son doesn't understand that. And yet, in complete obedience, Abraham, who's called a friend of God, is willing to take willing to take his son Isaac and go to Mount Moriah. Excuse me? Where? Where's our Lord crucified? Mount Moriah. Oh, 1800 B.C., he's going to the same place there, that, that, that the Lord goes many years later. The Bible is perfectly symmetrical when you look at it that way. At any rate, he brings his son up there, puts him on the altar, ties him up. How's that look? Uh, Dad, what are you doing? And he didn't fight with him? He submitted. And he says, okay, Dad. Not knowing what's, but he's saying there's no way that God's going to allow me to lose my only child who's the seed of, I know he has another child, but for those Bible critics out there. But I'm talking about the only promised seed is only one. That's Isaac. And Isaac's not going to be offered. He had to wait 25 years before he got Isaac. You know that? And now he's going to offer him up. And then all of a sudden, the Lord says, Abraham, Abraham, do thy, do thy son no harm. In other words, put it down. It's okay. The Lord, watch it, himself has provided himself a sacrifice. The Lord himself, at that moment, a ram caught in the thickets with the horns was stuck. A male lamb, ram, caught in the thickets. And he said, there's your sacrifice. When did that happen? Right when he needed it. The Lord is our provider. Give me, Lord, you more than I desire because you're my provider. Hey, listen, you know what I'm telling you right now? He provided for Abraham at his most dark hour. It was dark. He's going to kill his own son, church. And God says, no, here's the ram. That's your offering. God will provide, look at it, himself. Himself, a ram for the offering. And he did when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, himself to be our offering lamb. Amen. Amen. But I'll tell you what, that's what that term Jehovah Jireh comes. The Lord is our provider. Who ultimately supplies your provision? God. You say, you know, we, we have to work or and you buy food or grow food or do what you got to do. I understand that and, and we're thankful for that. We all thank for that, even in difficult times. Be thankful. But realize that it's ultimately God who's your provider. I want to tell you that, that he'll provide you not only with what you need when you need it. He'll provide you with sanity. He'll provide you with health. Hear me? Peace, comfort, joy. He'll give you what the world can't give you. He'll give us what we desire most. He'll provide for us. You know, a, a child that doesn't know any better, doesn't understand economics, doesn't understand finances, doesn't understand work and wages and taxes and, and all the beautiful things that we come to love, <laughs> and he doesn't understand any that. The little child just says, Mommy, I'm hungry. Do we have any food? And she says, Okay, honey, yeah, here. And she makes him a sandwich or does something. He doesn't know what went into that. He just knows he's hungry. I need some food. And he's looking to his mom or his dad or someone he loves and says, I need help. I need someone to provide for me. And that's exactly what we are. Is we're children. No matter how old we are, no matter how smart we are, no matter how strong we are, no matter what we think we understand, we're still children. You know what I was praying this week? Lord, I'm weak. I need help. Wednesday I preached a message on courage. If you weren't here, watch it online. I mean, that was for me, to encourage me, to give me the courage to courage you. Because we need, you know, oh, I don't need, I'm good. No, I'm not good. I need God. My God needs to strengthen me, like Nehemiah said. And I need to be encouraged so I can encourage others and I can go on. And I need to be full of faith, not fear. 
God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But you know what? You need to be encouraged spiritually because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it's important you're hearing this either here or there. You're hearing it. Amen. Amen. So here's the thing about that. Who's our provider? God is our provider. I woke up, and I'm going to give you something out of 2 Kings in a moment. It's a really amazing story. And I woke up this morning with that song in my head by Kate Thompson, the provider. And I played it downstairs, you guys, and I was playing it up here, and it just hit me. It, provider. That, that's God. You're my provider. You're our provider. Somebody say amen. amen. He's the one that provides for us. Don't lose faith, like Paul said, but my God shall supply all your need. He's going to supply in 2 Kings, I'm going to have to turn there, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7, there's an account here, story of Elisha, the prophet. And Elisha's going to help out a widow woman who has nothing during a time of famine. You can read it later, just pay attention, watch. 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. She has no money, she's a widow, she has no food, she has no money. God help me, Elisha, God sends Elisha to prophet. You know what he tells her? He says, uh, do you have any empty pots? I mean, God is amazing the way he does stuff. And empty pots. You, 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 pots and pans at home. Cups, jars. You know, you know what they're called? Vessels. So it's a drinking vessel, a cooking vessel. It's a vessel. So he put, the, put, the, put the vessels out. And then put out as many as you got. He, she puts out, doesn't say how many, a plethora of different sizes and shapes of vessels. And you know what the Lord does? The Lord does something you're miraculous. He says, I'll read it to you. Then is not a vessel more. In other words, okay, you, that's it. You got it? And the oil stayed. He filled those empty vessels with oil. Then he tells her, go, sell the oil, pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children. Go, sell the oil, pay off your debt, and live off the rest. Somebody say amen. What did God do that with? Nothing. He said, empty pots. He filled it with oil. And when the pots stayed, in other words, she put out, let's say, 20. Is that it? Then it stopped there. If she put out 30, guess what? It would have went 30. If she put out 50, it would have went 50. As many as there were, he filled. And he filled it with oil. She sold the oil, a commodity. Oil is a commodity. Black gold. <laughs> it's a commodity that runs the world. And it's that petro, and it's also good oil to use to cook. Amen. So whatever that oil was, boy, she sold that, paid off her debt, and then she lived off the rest. But what's the upshot of that whole story? God provided. She had nothing. God provided. God provided. My God, here it is, watch it, shall supply what? All your need. What's all? And part of it. I got to help God out, though. Yeah, we feel that way. But my God, just play all your need. You know what I feel? I feel God's got my back. I do. I really believe that. Sir. Pastor Joe, you're the pastor. Yeah, I'm telling you. I know I'm telling you. My wife knows it. Do I sometimes get scared? Do I sometimes? Yes, I'm human. But do I let it stop me by God's grace? No. But I'll tell you something else. I know because I have been faithful. By God's grace, we'll continue to be faithful. And I have always been a supporter. And because I know, like it said, the Philippians, they helped him. They gave. God is going to say, my God, Paul says, is going to take care of you. My God's going to take care of me, going to take care of you. Somebody say amen. amen. My God shall supply all your need. Don't let the devil put fear in your heart and your mind amen. to keep you thinking, who's oh, going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen either. But I'm going to walk by faith and trust the Lord and pray that all will work out well. Because all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And I'm called according to his purpose to do what God wants me to do. Are you listening to that out there? Say amen in your living room. Say amen. Because I'm telling you, just because you're not here, you're with us. God will never leave us or forsake us. I mean, like when you said that today, Phil, driving here in Psalm 1611, at the right hand of God is joy and at his presence is ever peace and evermore. And you'll be there. Evermore, you're the, he's with us whether you know it or not. When, he, when you drive, he's with you. When he's at home, he's with you. He will never leave you. He's your provider. Not worry about your health care provider. That might get you in trouble. <laughs> we don't know. No, we don't take your health care provider. We only take this one. Oh, man, help me. 
God doesn't care about your plan, your deductible. He cares about you. My God shall supply all your need. You know, we, we know that we've seen over the years, my wife and I, how God has provided for us. And sometimes when you don't understand how, that's where faith comes in. I mean, I, and I, and I, this is as practical as it gets, and it's, it helps us. I think like this. It helps me think. It helps me stay focused. You know, let's say you're buying an item at a store, and it costs $7.93. No, those are not magic numbers. I just thought of them. And, and, and you, you say, okay, seven ninety, dollars and you give the clerk a 10 or your debit card. And you say, what's well, well, I can I cover that. Seven bucks, eight bucks. Yeah. You're not thinking of anything esoteric, anything deep. You're just going to pay the bill. But when it gets to be bills that are big and debt that's high and stuff that you don't know how it's going to happen, that's when we get panicked. That's when we start to worry. And there's a, there can be a cause. And that's where you guys say, Lord, I don't know how, but I trust you're going to work it out and go by faith. And then leave it at that and try to live your life the best way you can and look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So second point is, my God, personal, shall supply all your need. That's a provider. If you ever have a chance, you hear that song by Kay Thompson, provider, great song. And he is our provider. If he's your provider, say amen. You know, you, you say, listen, not just provide you with what you need to get through, like the widow woman. He, if you have a good mind, God gave you a good mind. If he gave you good health, God provided you with good health. If he gave you a good constitution, a good immune system, thank God. If he gave, whatever he gave, thank God in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God gave me a good wife. She's got courage and faith and stands by my side and certainly loves the Lord and sings all day long and meditates on the scriptures and reads and prays and helps people all day long. She is a good woman. She don't like what I talk about her. It's her birthday. We sang happy birthday to her. She got a call the other night, midnight, woke us up from a friend that she hadn't seen in how many years? 30 years probably. I mean, out of the blue. Midnight, no doubt. That's typical. <laughs> and she wakes. I, she was awake. I was dozed out. I got startled because you think it's Grandma Kitty or something. And she recognized, didn't recognize the number. She says, no, I don't know. Maybe it's a robocall. Call back later. I said, honey, check who that is. And it turns out to leave a voice message, and it's someone that we're good friends with. And we're praying so that later on she'll probably call her back and pray to God softens her heart um, to get saved. She, you know, doesn't know what we know. She goes out of our life. Yeah, we've tried. I witnessed to her years ago, my wife too. And she'd correspond with her every year around Christmas. Then kind of fell off, fell off the edge there and didn't hear from her for a couple of years. She didn't know where she is. And she didn't know if she was alive. And she reached out. You never know. He's our provider. He takes good care of us. All right, something else I want to know. And last night in prayer meeting, we were praying. And he, he said that a few times about God will provide for us. And I, that's a confirmation to me. Like, yeah, that's exactly what they need to hear. Don't worry. God's going to provide. Amen? Say amen. Third thing I want you to look at, back to, back to Philippians 4.19. Great, it's a great memory verse, too. But my God shall supply all your need, here it is, church, according to his riches in glory. According to his riches in glory. Well, what's that? Well, one, my God is personal. Shall supply all your need is a provider. I didn't have room for the third point, but he put the fourth point. Uh, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory according to his riches and glory. That's God's providence. Providence. Here's what providence is. It's a city in Rhode Island. No, not that providence. Here's what providence is. God, especially when conceived as omnisciently directing the universe and affairs of mankind as a wise, benevolent ruler. That's it. God, especially when conceived as omnisciently directing, he's overall, he's omniscient, knows everything, directing the universe and affairs of mankind with wise benevolence. In other words, he sees everything that we don't see. Like the little kid, we sang as a little kid, he got the whole world in his hands. The Lord's got the whole thing. He calls the earth his footstool. 
He, the whole, God sees everything. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. We'll get to that in a minute. So he, he's omniscient. He knows everything. He sees everything that goes on. He understands everything. That's God's providence. So he says, my God shall supply all your need. Here it is, according to his riches and glory. What does that mean? Well, I don't fully understand except this. It's going to be what God wants to give me. That's omniscience. I mean, that's uh, providence. He's going to give me, you with me, what he deems best. He deems best, it's good. If you got God's best, you got the best. See, we don't, you know, if we ask for what we want, we might get in trouble. Hello. Sometimes God will give you what you want. And sometimes God will say no. Sometimes God will say, no, you want that, but right now that's not better for you. But my God shall supply all you need according to his riches and glory. According to God's riches, spiritual riches, truth, understanding, discernment, wisdom, communication with God, fellowship with the Lord. That is wisdom. That is great. That is something he can only he can give. That's the best thing. It's like you sent that picture to someone about the Bible. That's more powerful than anything. It's what we can give at a time like this is the Word of God. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That will get you through the storms of life. I say at every wedding I've ever done that when the, when the two houses were built in Luke, Luke 6, they're both built. One's built on a rock foundation. One's built on sand. It says when the storms come. Wait a minute. The house on a rock wasn't exempt from storms. Neither are we. But when the storms come, our house will stand because it has a foundation, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. When the house has no foundation, the storms come, it'll crumble. So we go through it, and we say, but God will give us what we need. He's going to get us through it. And God, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. According to his riches and glory. I'm going to read Psalm 50. I'm going to read a couple of verses to you real quick. Verses 10 to 12 says this. Here's a great portion of Scripture for talking about God's providence. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hill, hills. Amen? For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, why, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. In other words, God sees everything. He's got everything. He's going to take care of it, and he's going to give us what we need. Amen? Mephibosheth in the Bible is a great Bible example of God's providence. For those who don't know, Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son. Jonathan was David's best friend. King David loved Jonathan before he was king. His father-in-law, Saul, was the king. Saul was jealous of David. David defeats Goliath, not Saul. An evil spirit went and saw he wants to kill David from that point forward. Chase him. Nice father-in-law. Throws a spear at him. Tries to kill him. And finally, you know, he says, look, David, he tells Jonathan, Jonathan, I got to get out of here. Your dad wants to kill me. No, he doesn't. And he does. And he heard that night. And he goes, shoot the arrow and all that. And he, he gets a little cold between Jonathan and David. And Jonathan said, no, go. And then they hugged each other. They embraced. And he says, don't, don't forget me. Don't forget my family. Don't forget our covenant. You'll always love me and my family. You with me? So watch. He leaves, and Jonathan dies in battle years later. Does the season again. David becomes king, as was prophesied by Samuel. He becomes king after King Saul dies in battle. Blinded and lost and had no fellowship with God. Had to go to a witch to get Samuel because he didn't know what to do, and he was in trouble, and he remained in trouble. But David was okay, and David now ascends the throne at 30 years old. David, at some point during his reign, says, you know what? Find out if there's anybody left of Jonathan's seed. I love Jonathan. We were like this. And then, you know, because of that covenant I made with Jonathan, I want to show kindness, listen to me, to the house of Jonathan. And then his, his servant Ziba said, well, there is one guy. His name is Mephibosheth. Yeah, where is he? That's Jonathan's son, but he's lame. He's crippled. He, he was the, the mother, the nurse ran with him when he was young, and he fell and didn't say what, but he, he was lame, it says. Well, Mephibosheth couldn't help himself. In other words, he was crippled. He was lame. 
sounds like us. And then the son, the king, watch it, sends somebody, King Jesus sends somebody to rescue you in that pitiful condition. Say, I'm not physically lame, I'm in good health. Physically, spiritually, you're lame. We're all crippled, we're all hurt. We come to Christ in many different ways. We have deficiencies, deficits, malignities, spiritual, demonic spirits that need to be chased out of us. We've got addictions and lusts and things that will rule your life and kill you. And with that, the king, David, sends his servant to get this Mephibosheth, and Mephibosheth is in Lodi Bar, sitting on the ground. Who knows what he's doing? He can't do much. And you know what happens out of the blue when he's least expecting it? He went to me, church, least expecting it. He says, somebody's coming to you from the king. The guy says, from the king? I'm a nobody. From the king? Yeah, he wants you. You're David's, you're Jonathan's son. Yes, I am. He wants you to come to his house and sit at his table and be fed until all the days of your life. He's going to feed you and provide for you because of his providence. He knew where you were. He knew how to get you. He rescued you from your dirtiest days, from the pit, and he pulled you up and he sat you at his table. He went from the depths of depression to the height of joy and elation sitting at King David's table. I mean, that's an amazing account. He's Mephibosheth. What a great story. He pictures you and I that one day we're invited to come to the king's table. And you come lame. By the way, when he got there, he was still lame. You come to Christ. It doesn't mean you're, all those things that are wrong with you are going away. It just means God forgave them. God washed you. God said, don't worry about all those things. I'll work through them. And it doesn't matter what your things are that you have. Just come to Christ, lay it at the altar, give him your heart. He'll take it from there. And he could use a broken vessel as good as a good vessel. He'll use anything you give him. And, and Mephibosheth came, and he got rewarded. What did he do? Nothing. He was connected to the right person. Come on. Are you connected to Jesus Christ? You're connected. To, if you want God's blessing, say amen. I suggest you get connected to Jesus Christ as quickly as possible. I, connect, I pray you, you love the Lord. You ask him to save you. You trust him. You talk to him. Because if you do that, his Father in heaven will show his mercy on you and pour out favor on you. Because what parent doesn't want to hear good things about their children? I've never met one. You want to get on the good side of a parent? Rave about their kids. Oh, man, I'm telling you, they might be upset. You start saying how nice their kids are and how smart they are and how beautiful they are and how, how talented they are. Woo, they'd be excited. Then talk about them hiding back. <laughs> but true, that's the way. When you boast on Jesus, that makes God the Father happy. Think about that. He sent his own son to take that suffering and beating for us and who did not deserve it, and he did it willingly. And we could boast on him and thank you, Jesus. That's why the name of Jesus Christ being lifted up in America today is what is preserving us. Preserving us to go forward. And us individually. Keep praising the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So Mephibosheth was connected to the right person. He's connected to Jonathan. Well, I'm connected to Jesus. That's even better. If I, he's connected to Jonathan, he got blessed. I'm connected to Jesus. We get blessed. Providence is when you least expect. Listen, Mephibosheth didn't order that. He had no idea. He was just, you know, sometimes you go about your day and you have no idea what's going to happen and something that you never even envisioned happened. Now to him it could do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I mean, you'd have no idea when it's going to come upon you. But if you don't give up, you don't quit, just hang in there, God's going to bless that. Just don't lose your faith. That's what providence is, talks about. He loved it, and I'll give you one other thing on providence before I get to my last point. When Israel was in Egypt, and there was a famine in the land, and there was plagues, rather, in the land. Remember the plagues to get them out of Egypt? The last plague was the 10th plague, the Passover land. We talked about that this morning. Well, for, at the first outset of his message, that was the 10th plague. But before that, there was frogs and lice and blood and darkness, locusts. And there was all sorts of things, mer moraine, murane, all sorts of things. Plagues, killing cattle and beef. You know what's strange, though? You read the Bible, 
in Exodus that they lived in they lived in an area of Egypt called Goshen. You ever see Goshen? We passed Goshen on the way upstate. It's on Route 17. I mean, you, you see these names. You went they, they named them after Bible names. Goshen. And that's a good name. You know why? Because that was protected from the plague. Even when there was darkness throughout the land of Egypt, Goshen had what? Light. Church, you with me? The world's dark right now. But you know what God gives us? Light. Amen. You know what God gives you? Light. Amen. You're children of light, not children of the darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief in the night. So Goshen had light. Goshen was protected. And while the cattle were dying elsewhere, it didn't die in Goshen. While the, things, the plagues were hitting other parts of Egypt, it wasn't hitting Goshen because God was there. And he, his providence protected that area. Lord, protect us in Jesus' name and cover us with your precious blood. That's what I do here. I come in, I'm walking around the building, literally praying, God, protect the church, cover your precious blood, keep us safe from any harm and evil and any diseases. In Jesus' name, amen. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. That's God's providence. So again, what does that mean? It means God's going to give you what you need, what, you, what he knows is best for you. What you right, what you need. He'll supply all your need. Exactly. He'll give you what you need. Because what I need you, Lord, is more than I can ask. You're my provider. And he's going to give us what we need. A good father, a good mother, a good parent is going to give the child what he or she needs. Amen? God is a good parent. God loves us. He wants to help us. He, my God, Paul said. Why is he in prison, by the way? I don't lose sight of that. He's in prison. And he, you know, and listen, he's saying, but my God, even then, oh no, my God is going to take care of us. Just by all you need. He's encouraging the Philippian church while he's in prison. Saying, you guys help me out. God's going to take care of you. Shall supply all you need according to his riches and glory. He knows what we need. You know, Paul asked for God to remove that thorn, and he said no. Sometimes God says no, but because he knows best. He, he didn't give Paul what he wanted at that moment because Paul was so gifted, and Paul was going to be used so powerfully by God that he didn't want Paul thinking it was his strength. So you know what he said? I'm going to leave you this thorn in the flesh after you had that revelation in heaven to keep you on your knees, to keep you humble, lest I should be exalted above due measure. You see that? That's what Paul said. He said, God left me that thorn so it would keep me humble. God can give you something and you thank him for it, but when you think you got it all, God said, no, 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 relax. Lord, can you take that thorn? No. My grace is sufficient for thee. In thy weakness, you're made. My strength is made perfect. Come on. In your weakness, my strength is made perfect? That's like saying, Lord, I'm weak. Help me. I've got some things. i got some thorns. I can't. You're not taking away. Give me compensation. And he sure did with the Apostle Paul. So he's able to pray that in prison because he had grace. He had power with God. And he knew who was his God. Do you know your God? Say amen. My God shall supply, he's your provider, all your need according to his riches and glory. That's God's providence. I didn't fit that because it's a long word, and I wouldn't fit it. I wouldn't have enough peas and go too far out there. So I'm just telling you, it's providence. And providence is in Rhode Island. That's where Sam Stern got saved, a Jewish rabbi from Poland in the Holocaust. His whole family died in the Holocaust, except him, the lost Jewish rabbi, Hasidic comes to America, goes to Providence. God isn't funny. In Providence, he sees a little storefront church. Somebody at a little table set up handing out tracts. What's going on? We have a special speaker tonight. Oh, many years ago. Come on in. Oh, okay. Comes in. Word of God smites this guy's heart. He gets saved. We know Sam Stern. He passed on to be in glory. He lived in Brooklyn. He came to our church in Brooklyn. He was very suspicious of anybody because of what he'd been through. But we, we befriended him. He knew that we were genuine seer. And we were in a few churches he actually trusted. And he, you know, so that, his, his book's called The Victory of Light. We do have it. We have access to it. Great account of his life, how he got saved. But the reason I say that, it hit me. He got saved in Providence, Rhode Island. All right, lastly, power. 
Let's look at the last verse, the last part of that verse. For my God, personal, shall supply all your need, provider, according to his riches and glory through God's providence. How does it end? By Christ Jesus. By who? By Christ Jesus. Jesus, all power in heaven and earth is in Jesus' hands. He says, as thou, Father, hast given him Jesus power over all flesh, John 17, 2, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I mean, there's power in the blood. There's power in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other name given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved. There's power in the blood. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power. Somebody say amen. Power. I, he's got the power. Thank God for the power. Jesus controls it. And it says, according to his riches and glory, by Christ Jesus. Well, if it's by Christ Jesus, he could do it. It's his power. He could do it. Sometimes you might want to do something, but you lack the power to do it. You don't have the authority to do it. He's got the authority. He's got the power. He's got the wherewithal. He's got anything he needs. All he needs is a willing heart to say, Lord, help me. He wants you to cry out to him. He'll help you. You know, here's the thing I want to remember. When you pray, you pray in Jesus' name because he hears all those prayers. And those prayers go right to the throne of heaven. And God hears those prayers. Jesus says to John, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Whatsoever you. I've asked for some things in Jesus' name, and I haven't gotten it. So then I say, why didn't I get it? I guess it wasn't God's will for me. That's my faith tells me. Otherwise, I say what well, it says in the Scripture. But I understand that we can't always get what we want. When we pray for it, Jesus himself prayed in the garden, let the cup pass. I mean, Jesus. We're talking about the perfect Christ, the perfect man who said, Father, it's possible this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I mean, that was deep. We're not faced with that. But you're faced with saying, Lord, I'm asking for something, and maybe God will give it to you. God will get you through. He'll provide for you. He wants you to have a personal walk with him. But finally, the power after the providence, the power is this. Believe that God has the power. See, I believe God has power to do anything. God created the universe by speaking into existence. Created the universe by speaking into existence. We don't understand what that means. But I could say it, and I believe it. He doesn't need, I don't care what the top scientists in the world say, 6.4 billion years old. I don't really care. I know he's spoken into existence. I know it by faith. And the same God that created the universe protects us. That same God that did that could provide for us. And he's got all the power he needs to do what he wants to do. And one day he's going to come back and change everything. Until that time, we pray God give us the courage and grace to go on, walk with you. And here's the verse again. Let's read it again all together. Let's read four, Philippians 4.19. Follow my lead. We'll just read it slowly. Uh, we'll go slowly through it. <clears throat> one, two, three. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What a great verse, and I'm going to ask you this before we close. Is anybody here listening here or through the web and on streaming live, if you've never asked Jesus to save you, today's the day to do it. Call him. Call upon him. He, he will save you. Whoever calls the Lord, Jesus said, I will know why it's cast him out. Come to Jesus the best way you know how. Say, Lord, I'm hurt, sick, I'm upset, angry, scared, fearful, worried, full of anxiety. I understand those realities. But just pray, Lord, heal my heart. Fill me with your peace. Give me the joy that only you could give me. Let me believe what I just heard, that my God shall supply all my needs. Help me to trust that. Help me to believe in you, Lord. And you cry out, Lord, save my soul, first of all. First of all, if you want to pray. Secondly, after you cry out, Lord, save my soul, make me a new creature in Christ, and mean that. Come into my heart. Live in my heart. Wash away my sins. Then as a believer, you say, Lord, I believe that, but I need help. I need comfort. I need peace to get through this trying time. And you ask God to do that. He'll do that for you. Cry out to him the best way you know how. And that's just talking to God. Lord, help me. I'm afraid. Lord, help me. I need courage. Lord, help me. I'm scared. Lord, help me. What do next? Show me. 
keep my eyes on you. Protect us. Direct us. Have your way in our life. Personal God, he's a provider. He's got all the power to take care of you. Because my God is able. My God shall supply all your need. According to his rich and glory by Christ Jesus. With that said, heads bowed, eyes closed. I'll say a prayer. And I pray that you that tuned in will pray along with me right now before you go about the rest of your day's activities. So with that said, here's the prayer. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, the best way I know how, asking you to wash me of my sin, cover me with the precious blood. I know I received you as my Savior 34 years ago, but I pray also that you would continue to give me the peace that passeth all understanding. You'd help me, Lord God, to not live in the fear of the storm, but to go through it knowing that you'll take us through it. Protect all of us, all our loved ones, all the church members, all our family members. Lord, have mercy upon us. I mean, just like Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son. We're connected to God through Jesus. We're a son of God. And I pray you'd protect us, Lord. Keep us all safe. Have your way and direct us with your blessings and help us to obey what takes place in these next coming days and weeks and continue to trust that you'll get us through it. And we, we have all eternity to give you the glory and praise to get us through a difficult time. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. If I said, amen. God is able, personal God, providing God, God who is providentially over all the affairs of the world, and he's got the power to save. Amen. If you, if you enjoyed that, you got tuned in, praise the Lord. Love you. Wednesday night, we will be. Well, the same thing. Don't come to church Wednesday night. Listen, stream. We'll stream it. Don't bother coming. A few people that need to be will be here. They know. The rest of us to stream it. And that's 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Can we say amen? amen? All right. That's it. Praise the Lord. How about a big amen? amen. That's good. There you go. Stand up.